Now we are going to discuss about constants of the transmission line. That means transmission line parameters, resistance, inductance and capacitance formation in the transmission line. As already we have seen that transmission network is a very long network in terms of hundreds of kilometer. When we are seeing this hundreds of kilometer length of transmission line, there will be a resistance, inductance and capacitance formation will be there. So we have to consider these three parameters whenever we are going for analyzing the power system. These three parameters contributes a major power loss or it may be a voltage drop in the network which affects the receiving end power. Now we will see how these parameters forms in the transmission line. In a transmission network, the resistance, inductance, capacitance, also we have to take the conductance portion, though it is very less in order to calculate an accurate result also we have to consider the conductance of the transmission line these parameters are all evenly distributed all over the length of the transmission network but for our analysis we have to consider as a lumped parameters inductance and resistance both of them we have to consider as a series parameter in the transmission line and the capacitance and the conductance both we have to consider parallel to your transmission network. When comparing these all four parameters, normally when we are going to analyze some parameter for making the analysis simplification we are assuming some parameters we have to neglect it for example while comparing to the line current transmission line current the leakage currents are so small so that's why we are neglecting the conductance from the transmission line network and in the same way when we are comparing with reactance of the transmission line the resistance value is very very small so at some cases we may neglect the resistance value but the main important thing is power main important thing for power loss is resistance only if we keep on neglect all the thing then we can't be able to make a perfect analysis on the power system. So whenever we are going for analyzing any transmission network, though these parameters may be distributed, evenly distributed all over the length of the transmission line, we have to consider for our analysis as a lumped parameters. So we know very well if there is any conductor there will be existence of resistance how the inductance as well as capacitance forms in the transmission line the inductance as well as capacitance are all because of the electromagnetic as well as electrostatic fields that set up in the transmission conductors we know very well if the current flows through the conductor a magnetic field will set up across the surface of the conductor that will spread at the core part of the conductor to the infinity part distance of the conductor in the same way as like in capacitance that electrostatic field because of charge in the conductor that spreads this creates the inductance as well as capacitance property in the conductor. Let's 
go for calculating how to calculate the resistance inductance and capacitance in a transmission line to calculate the line reactance we know many formulas in order to calculate the resistance basically from the ohms law we can able to say r is equal to v divided by i that is voltage divided by current and in terms of power if we say then average power loss in the conductor by i square that means normally we will say p equal to i square r that i square r is the power loss that because of the resistance presence in the transmission line apart from these parameters voltage or power if we doesn't know about anything then how can we calculate the resistance yes the basic formula we know depends upon the cross sectional area of the conductor and the unit length of the conductor the resistance in the conductor it dep depends upon the three main thing one is material the next one is length and cross sectional area of the conductor so we can say resistance r is equal to rho l by a resistivity into length by area of the conductor so simply we can calculate the resistance of the transmission line but depends upon the temperature the resistance may change for example at initial time the temperature may be t1 and after some time if the conductor gets heated up then the temperature may vary because of the temperature variation the resistance of the conductor also that may vary so then how our resistance equation becomes then we can say r1 is the initial conductor r not is the initial value of resistance and this t1 is the current rise in temperature as well as the t not is nothing but called as initial temperature so from that we can easily calculate the resistance at present temperature r1 equal to r not of 1 plus alpha 1 into t1 minus t0 the temperature difference the alpha represents the temperature coefficient of the conductor at temperature t1 so from this simple equation we can able to calculate the line resistance and from this we can easily calculate i square r loss or otherwise the voltage drop of the transmission line